Hello and welcome to Connections, Forum for Relationship, Expression and Healing. This is episode 46 with our special guest, Marianne West. Our shows offer single episodes and short series of talks and interviews regarding the most important areas in a human life, such as relationship issues, personal expression, self-development, and also cultural development, as well as healing these areas. The purpose of our show is to give you inspiration and also to teach you new skills with which to handle the issues which are connected with our topics. So today we move again into the category healing. We have talked a lot about energetic healing and other modalities in past episodes. So today we will address the healing capacities of food and the connection with our mood, which is especially challenged when we have the diagnosis of a life-threatening illness. So before I, uh, we did introduce our guest, some information about us, your hosts. I am Margarita Crystal Lotus. I am an intuitive life and business mentor who help professional women overcome emotional overwhelm and stress and also restore their energy so that they can have fulfilling relationship and watch their career flourish. I also have a, a private retreat center here in Kingston, Ontario, where I see private clients for weekend retreats. Now, Heidi, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Margarita. I'm Heidi Hernlein from thepowerofrelationship.com. I'm a voice therapist, a relationship coach, and many other hats I'm wearing. At the moment, I'm a host for Hangouts as is Margarita, and it happens that yesterday, exactly yesterday, we were talking in the Wisdom Factory show of a similar topic, and I invite you to go there later to see that. Anyway, I'm living in Italy together with my husband Mark, he is American, and we have a retreat here and a place, a physical place, where people can come for courses and also for holidays, and this is also a cultural association. And I think I have talked enough about myself, and now I want to talk about Marianne West. Marianne West is grown up in Germany and actually in the same house as myself, because Marianne is my sister. <laughs> she left for America in her early 20s, and she has explored many things, including traditional roles as a wife, and she's a mother of three children and already grandmother, and she ran a grocery store for many, many years, and then she became a writer and a yoga teacher, and she is a passionate gardener. When you come to her house, you won't find many flowers in front or, you know, ordered things like in all other houses, but you will find vegetables, beds, and wonderful with flowers in between, but she is really doing wonderful things, and she discovered permaculture in 2011, and she felt a sense of harm, homecoming, or being able to give a name to what she was already practicing. It is healthy food. I know every day she did a smoothie for us in the morning when we were there to visit her. <laughs> <laughs> healthy food from going to eating and sharing, environmental activism, community building, and yes, even teaching yoga fits into the practice of permaculture. So we have invited her today because she was able to know, to use her knowledge for the right foods, how to grow them and how to prepare them in her husband's healing. And I think she will tell you more about it herself. Mayanne, first of all, thank you that you come to your sister's event. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, so when we left you two years ago, there was a diagnosis that Mike had cancer. And could you tell us a little bit how, how it was for you, for both of you, and what were the decisions? What action did you take? What decisions did you make? And so on. Sure, I'm happy to. 
So um, we got, it's actually almost three years ago now that we had the diagnosis. And at the time, we were fairly newly married. And I think first, when you're faced with that diagnosis, a lot of fear comes up. And I think for my husband more so because he actually came home from a doctor's appointment and said it's benign, it's not bad, right? And then we went to an appointment and I was all, wow, Kaiser, which is our insurance, it's a you know, HMO and they're very conservative, but they asked us in for an appointment. And I thought, hmm, they're really proactive. They want to tell us what to do to prevent bad things to happen. And when we got there, the person kept talking about cancer, cancer, cancer. And I'm like, wait a minute, he doesn't have cancer. And she said, no, he does. So, and my husband is a dentist, so he's very familiar with medical lingo, so to speak. But it shows you how deep the fear is when you're faced with that kind of diagnosis and also the power of denial, where you just don't want to deal with it for a while. And so... We worked through that and got to a place of where we actually uh, were able to talk about it and start exploring. So we looked into a lot of different possibilities. And what is offered by regular medicine and his cancer is prostate cancer. So basically you can have radiation or you can have removal. And both of those things lead to um, side effects, which are, might not happen in all cases, but it's a pretty good 50 plus percent chance, and they include things like incontinence and impotence, which are kind of not so fun options to have, right? And um, so I pretty much, I have to backtrack a little bit. I myself had cancer. I think 12 years ago now, maybe 13 years ago. And at the time, even so, I was using alternative uh, methods. I choose surgery. It was a cancer my father died of, and colon cancer, and I was with him when he passed away. So remembering that not so, you know, fun or a very painful journey really towards death, I had a lot of fear at that time. So for me, surgery was, yes, I have to do this. And at the time, my homeopath even told me to do chemo, and I did, and it was miserable. And I never, ever, ever would do it again, and I never, ever would suggest to anybody to do it again because it's, it's more you survive chemo than you survive cancer, really. So I had all of that in my own background. I had said fear I had dealt with. I had said um, disease story I had dealt with. And now here he was with cancer, and he was with his own emotions. So lots and lots of stuff came up at the time. But I was pretty clear that I really didn't want to see him go down the traditional medicine route of you know surgery and radiation and just being pretty miserable. So we explored different things and I think I more than him because that was more my field of interest, lifelong interest really in nutrition and you know all sorts of different things. And we came across a couple of things very close to us in San Diego. So I live in San Diego, California and uh, actually just maybe a couple of blocks from our house is an institute called Optimal Living Institute, and um, they have retreats, and you go there, and a lot of people there with um, uh, cancers and other diseases, and basically it's all raw food. Um, they do wheat grass, a lot of wheat grass. They do a lot of wheat grass en enemas when you go there, and corn cleansing and all of that. So on Sundays you can go and, and look at the facilities and look at everything. So we checked it out and we had a meal there. And um, we all and that was good. And you know, my husband is a little bit skeptical, but he was like, Okay, this is fine. And then we also have the Gerson Institute in San Diego. 
which is a nonprofit, and uh, it was founded by Dr. Gerson's daughter, Charlotte. And Dr. Gerson was a German doctor who was active in Germany, uh, had to flee uh, during the Nazi time. And so, you know, he was in different stages of making his way to finally come to America, where he practiced and further developed his therapies, the Gerson's therapy. And he died in 1957, and the word is that he, it might have been foul play involved because, you know, at the time pharmaceutical industries were getting very prominent, and he certainly was promoting a therapy which had nothing to do with pharmaceuticals but all with natural food. So, so I went to the. That's a yeah. little bit what this is because you were naming some names which I personally don't know. Okay, so, so I, I can get there, but I can do it now too. So which one would you be interested in first? You, to hear you more named about? something which I just Gerson? couldn't get the word. No, Gerson, Gerson before was something, but oh, all this stuff you said, what you all did. Well, all these oh, things. okay. Uh, maybe OHI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Optimal Health Institute. That's an, an institute in Lemon Grove and also in Texas, which uh, people can go there for a week at a time and uh, do their therapy. So actually one week, two weeks, three weeks. So let me just uh, finish this really quick and then, you know, so you have the overview of the story and then go ahead and bombard me with all the questions you, you want to ask. So the Gerson therapy um, is, we, we got the book to learn about the therapy and it's actually, it kind of spoke to me a lot, I think, because it is German based, so the food was easy for me to understand. There's a lot of baked potatoes and so forth, but the Gerson therapy, the uh, emphasis is that you flood the body with nutrients and you detox at the same time and you support the bo body. So, uh, and we can go into details what that involves maybe throughout the, uh, the session here. So just to, to finish up with his story, so he decided to go to OHI, that's Optimal um, Health Institute, for two weeks. And uh, he was, even so it's just a block away from us, he went there with his little suitcase and stayed there. And a lot of uh, their emphasis is that you have to heal the body and you have to heal the mind. Because if you're not working with the mental aspect of, you know, any kind of, disease, with a fear around it, with the behaviors which have gotten you down that path, with uh, releasing stress and so forth. It doesn't, you know, it always is helpful to do things on your physical level, but if you don't release the mental part as well, full healing can, you know, it's, it's harder to take place or you have to kind of release that mental, emotional, part which gets you down the path of disease to, to allow your body to heal fully. So those two weeks were very good for him. And um, I would, well, as I said, we went together and we had a meal and I loved it. It was so good. You know, it's all raw stuff and it's wonderful. So then the day he went, I went there and I had a meal with him and it was really good. And then I went again uh, the next Sunday he was there and we had some mail and it was exactly the same stuff and only <laughs> it's the third time for me and I was getting kind of tired of it. So for him coming back, we talked about what is sustainable, what can we do? And honestly, I couldn't see myself eating, said, uh, Optima Health Institute food for two or three years. I just... I couldn't see it. If I'm already tired of it after three meals and I asked him how the meals were there and basically it was the same for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So you have your salad for breakfast, you have your salad for lunch, you have your salad for dinner and you have some raw crackers and I'm like there is no way I can survive that. And so the Gerson therapy to me felt like we can do this. So. We discussed, we talked, and that's what we chose to do. And then it was a long journey, and so we can go into details about that. Does that sound like good? 
Yeah, there is a comment here. Uh, Pamela says, can you talk more about behaviors and how they approach releasing unhealthy emotions? Okay, so uh, they meaning Optimal Health Institute, I'm assuming. So what, what they do, they have um, classes every day and they have classes in uh, breathing techniques, they have uh, yoga classes and all, uh, they call themselves inmates but you know obviously they are not necessarily inmates uh, in a prison, they're people choosing to be there but they call, that's what they call themselves. So um, they encourage uh, breathing exercises and um, they're also a little bit religious based so they they give um, when you when you come and sign in you get a big notebook and it has a whole bunch of um, writing spaces said you're encouraged to write every day said you're encouraged to explore your uh, emotions, what comes along, and then they give you also different classes. They have relaxation classes, they offer uh, massages. Part of the program is uh, you yourself, it's at OHI, you have to uh, do, I don't know how many, I'm thinking it's two um, meat grass enemas every day and there is a whole belief system that if you clean your colon said you know a lot of negative emotional stuff clears with it and I want to get to that later too because it was very interesting what happened with the Gerson therapies there and they do colonics once uh, a week which is some personally I'm not into colonics so basically so, so mind stuff is to to try to teach people meditation which it's really some you kind of need to to learn, it's hard to teach. You can, you know, it's some you you need to want to learn. But the so yoga, the so breathing, relaxation sessions. They do um, um, a talent show. So they also emphasize community coming together and having fun, which I think is a is a big. Um, part in in any kind of disease that a lot of people in their regular life have lost ability to uh, experience joy and to experience laughter and you know so so those are like the different modalities does that answer the question or or not so much I, I see a so. comment <laughs> Margarita, do you have a question for my uh, yeah, I, I do actually. So how does your breakfast and dinner and lunch look like? Can you go through a day of what what to eat? <laughs> yes. Uh, well actually let me see, I, I brought some little schedules and I'm just going to hold them up because we established that I'm not very good at uh, and also screen sharing and all of that. But right here, can you see this? Maybe not, huh? Hold it a little more yeah. and hold it still. Okay, is it visible or not? Uh, hardly. Yeah. Okay, well, yes. I just, this is basically a whole list and this is what our week looked like. And there are all those little categories. So. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I put this away again, it's, it's really it's the smallest part of the Gerson therapy. The Gerson therapy is actually mostly raw food, even so you think you're eating all the time. Okay, So if you're on, on Gerson, you take in about 20 pounds of food and vegetables per day per person. And a lot of that happens through chews. Okay, so let's just go to the actually intake part of the therapy. So you're asking breakfast. Uh, for breakfast, you can have an orange juice, and orange juice, according to Dr. Gerson, is the least valuable juice in terms of nutritional value. But uh, he included it in the therapy because it's a juice most people are used to, and you know, especially in America, having an orange juice in the morning is like a very 
common thing. A lot of people do that, right? So you would have an orange juice, and then you would have oatmeal. And so oatmeal is not soaked. You might be aware that you're supposed to soak uh, oats overnight to remove certain uh, um, oats can hold on to minerals in your body if they're not pre-soaked, right? But for girls, and you actually don't pre-soak them, you just cook them a day because they can remove toxins from your body as well. So you have oatmeal. Uh, you're allowed one tablespoon of sweetener per day. So that could be like a honey or some like that. So you could use that on your oatmeal or you can save it. You can have fresh food, unlimited, and you can have certain dried food, but you don't just eat them dried like raisins or apricots or whatever. And everything, everything, everything has to be absolutely organic. Okay, there is no commercial anything. Everything has to be organic. And uh, so if you choose to have some of the dried food, you pour first a hot water over them and let them uh, rehydrate. Or you can put them overnight into cold water. Because if you eat them actually dried, it's too much of a sugar rush. So you don't want to, to have that much coming up. So that would be your breakfast. But then throughout the day, especially if you're on the cancer therapy, you have 13 fresh juices. And they need to be juiced fresh and consumed immediately. And that's really the biggest bulk of the therapy. So you you have said one orange juice. Then throughout the day, you have uh, four green juices. And they are, they are a very specific recipe on that. And I try to do that screen share later because I wrote the recipe down so people can see that. You have uh, four plain carrot juices, and then the rest is carrot apple juice. So, so is, you know, you see yourself on the juicer all day long, <laughs> making a juice, drinking it, cleaning the thing, and here you go again, making the next one. And uh, especially for cancer, you can, uh, you're supposed to use a Norwalk juicer, which is a major investment. It's, it's very expensive. It cost us $2,500 to buy it. But it comes with a 12-year warranty, and it basically lasts forever. And um, there are some other choosers you can use, but the, the main thing is you never want to use a centrifugal. Is that, did I pronounce it right? You know, one which goes round round. Um, yeah. Uh, you don't ever want to use a chooser like that because, for one, it puts more uh, oxygenation into the juice, but it also, um, I don't know. It's it's an explanation. I have to to look it up now to see it uh, to actually make sense. You know, it's one of those things you read and you go, yeah, I got it, but now I can't really tell you why. But you can you can look it up, and I put some resources together. I can post to the show notes later on uh, where to find out more information and you know how to use the choosers and all of that. So. That's so uh, a little bit like uh, when the, the heat comes off of the centrifugal force, it alters the food and it's also oxygenated, which is, it, we don't want that, right? Is right. That it's like a that? heat, it's that, and it also kind of uh, turns uh, the charge uh, into negative, I believe, so then it becomes not a salesful for your body. So for anybody, no, no matter if it's just that you want to uplift your health, or if you're, uh, you know, if you're having any other disease like, you know, MS or chronic fatigue or whatever it is you're doing the therapy for, uh, or just, you know, anybody, it's best not to use the centrifugal ones. So there are a lot of masticating choosers like a champion and a green star and, you know, all of those which, which are much better. And they are becoming more and more popular and easy easy available. So usually it's the one the choosers which are really cheap and you can find them in all the discount stores, you know, or big box stores like Costco and so forth. They run maybe under hundred dollars and they're usually uh, the centrifugal ones. So those are actually not so good for you. It's best to avoid them. You want you want the they're called masticating choosers, so they are slowly they're basically what it is. They're first grading up your product, and then they're squeezing the juice out of it, and not by the force of going 
round and round. So for the Norvog, you, you create it, then you fold it in, in cloth, and then there's actually a hydraulic press, which uh, takes the juice out of, of the pulp. Yeah. So, so that was breakfast, right? So then immediately after breakfast, you start with your first, you have a green juice, and then half an hour later, you have a carrot, and then you have a carrot apple, and there are different supplements coming with it. And then lunch and dinner pretty much looks the same. So you always have uh, a soup. Uh, it's called Hippoc Hippocrates soup. And um, it's made out of, it has garlic and onions and leeks and potatoes and tomatoes and... Um, Let's see what else is there. A little bit of parsley and parsley root if you can get it and celery root. And if you can't get celery root, it's the celery stalks. And everything on Gerson needs to be cooked on low heat. So you don't have anything going on high heat really fast. Uh, so it's a soup. You simmer it on low for like two hours, and then it has to be milled, so it takes the fiber out. And people go right there. They go, what? But fiber is good for you. And yes, fiber is good for you. But when you are trying to eat fiber from 20 pounds of vegetables, you explode. You know, nobody can <laughs> nobody can do that in a day. So, and you know, especially when people uh, are sick in the system. It's not working so well if you have so much fiber in your body, it would just, you know, clod you up. So, but you're still eating fiber. You're eating the oatmeal. Then, uh, so you have a cup of set soup before lunch, before dinner, or with however you choose to do that. Then you have a big potato, and you have a salad, and you have two different kinds of vegetables. And they're basically cooked that you put a layer of either tomato or a layer of onion on the bottom of the pot. And then you put your veggies on, you lit it, and prefer preferably you have like one of those pot sets where the lid fits really, really tight so no steam escapes. And then you cook that on very low heat. And so that was one of the first things when we got on Gerson, I burned everything because it's really hard to get things on really low heat. You don't add water. And the other thing, you don't add salt to anything, salt or pepper. There are some fresh herbs which are on the permitted list. Um, there, there are some um, spices you can use. For example, you can use bay leaf, but it needs to be fresh bay leaf, not dried bay leaf. So I have a little bay leaf uh, tree growing. And so no salt comes from... Uh, so I don't want... I don't know if you say assumption or a theory or discovery of Dr. Gerson said uh, when people are developing disease, that the salt potassium uh, balance in the cells is not correct. So usually it's, it's uh, opposite from what it should be. And this is like a whole big thing. And if you're really interested in, you know, the scientific reasoning for why that is, I would recommend to to read uh, Dr. Gerson's book. There is one book out. It's called Fifty uh, Case Studies. Uh, he wrote himself, so it's quite an old book, but it's very interesting. And it also talks a lot about environment. And I want remind me to ask me about it if I don't get there, okay? So, um, but uh, he will explain all of that why it is. So in, in the therapy, you eliminate all salt intake besides what is naturally in food, where there is a lot of salt in food, actually. And then you also take potassium supplements, and they're very specific gerson potassium mixes you take. Uh, for example, you take in a lot of apples, they have a lot of potassium, so that particular kind of potassium is not included in his mix because you're already getting it out of the diet. So one of the things is to bring the salt-potassium balance on a cellular level into balance again through the diet. So now you have the diet, right? So you're eating your potato, you're eating um, your salad, uh, twice a day, you're eating um, your two different kind of vegetables, the soup, and then you're really filling up on all those juices you have throughout the day. We so. have a question there. Okay. Um, uh, Pamela is asking, uh, are you growing your own bay leaf? 
I may try that. I love having something growing in my kitchen at all times. Yes, I do. And bay trees are a Mediterranean uh, plant, so they're actually a tree. And if you put them in the ground, they get huge. You know, they can get 10, 20 meters high or, you know, higher. So I have mine in a pot outside, and I live in San Diego, so it's a bit of a Mediterranean climate. So I can keep it outside all year. But it would be very easy to put it in a nice pot, you know, maybe like a five gallon, like this size. So, because, I mean, you could keep a little one, but if you harvest every day from it, then it might get pretty sad looking really quickly. So I would, you know, maybe a pot this big and get your little bay tree and nurseries have them, but you could also probably order them, get them online. They're actually very pretty. They have so nice green leaves. Mm -hmm. And the fresh leaves taste way better than, yeah. You There's another comment the enzyme. from Pamela. Yeah. She says, cooking on low heat, you will preserve the enzymes too. And this is a very interesting fact to know that. Thank right. You. And that's, like, enzymes is so important on and therapy because you know the enzymes help your body to to heal and to um, stay healthy. That's why you drink the juices fresh. Yeah, everything is on low heat and so forth. So thank you, Pamela, for bringing it up because I probably would have totally forgotten about those enzymes. Yeah, and so you want to drink your juice very slowly too. You know, so you have it in your mouth since you already absorb a lot of nutrients. Um, in your mouth before it hits your stomach. But still you need the whole day for, for cooking and eating. Yes, you do. And that's not all you do. It's actually, when I read, and, and this is definitely part of my journey here, it's like when I read the book, they were saying, well, you know, the only drawback of the therapy is that it's so work intensive and said you should hire three people to to help and I'm like yeah right I'm German I know how to work you know blah 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 the whole ego thing came up you know and then when we started the first two weeks now uh, my sister knows me and the rest of you don't but I can work pretty hard and when I had my store I was working seven days a week I was working 12 13 hours which is not healthy I don't recommend it I think it was part of the past why I had my own dalliance with cancer, but you know, I can do it, I can tough it out, I can do it, right? So the first two weeks on Gerson were the hardest weeks of my life. I mean, I literally, I got up at six in the morning, I didn't shower, just put my clothes on, started in the kitchen, I would go to bed at nine o'clock at night, totally exhausted, didn't have a shower yet, probably didn't get rested, had carried pulp all over me, and it was just amazing, the amount of, you know, just, and, and I did it as well because, well, I started to first just do the chooses and then I, I did the full therapy because you might as well do it. Um, you know, it's it's hard to have any other foods in the house if, if you, you know, if you want to really go through it, right? I didn't want to have temptation for my husband to, to, to be there, so I eliminated everything we couldn't have. And so basically, you prepare 40 pounds of veggies. So between just getting into your house, you know, in a week, that's like almost 300 pounds of produce, right? You have to schlep home. You have to wash all of that. You know, you scrub it. So basically, um, you wash everything in tub water first, and I add some food-grade peroxide. So if there's any kind of pathogens on there, I said, they are eliminated, right? So you soak it for a little bit and you train it. Now, our water has fluoride in it. So, you know, that's very bad. Even so, I have a whole house filter, uh, which it takes out the chlorine. When we installed it, I didn't know that our water district had uh, added fluoride. It doesn't take out the fluoride. And that's another big part of the Gerson therapy is to eliminate all toxins from your environment. So water is the first. So you can use for everything you intake, you use uh, distilled water or uh, you can use reverse osmosis water as long as your 
district or your well doesn't have fluoride in it because even distilled um, reverse osmosis does not uh, remove fluoride 100 percent so of course we had to go get water so now I wash everything then you have to rinse it into good water then you know you prepare all of this so you prepare the soup the soup you can prepare for two days in advance so you cook it then you mill it then uh, you know you do all of that you always have tons and tons of pots there's obviously no microwave microwave is a big no-no you don't use that right um, but then you know everything else in your environment this is like a big part which we already were pretty good about not having any toxic chemicals to clean anything with, you know, dishes or household items, because basically what most people are using is on the no no list. You know, you can't, like, I don't know, like any of the name brand washing powders can't use it, any of the name brand dishwashing stuff, you know, your body soaps, your shampoos, especially, you know, anything you put on your body goes everywhere in. in inside your body very fast, especially on your hair, on your feet, which is a great thing to know when you use aromatherapy, for example, because if you apply oils to the bottom of your feet, it goes everywhere in your body very fast. But especially shampoos have so much stuff in them which are actually cancer causing, hair dyes, you know, I mean, you name it, you go there for a while when you first start to to adjust to the therapy, you feel like the whole world is trying to kill you, you know, because, I mean, as I say, I was already pretty aware, and we used a lot of stuff, but there were still a lot of things we had to eliminate and get rid of, and, and just get into awareness, you know, so, yeah. wow, Let even... Me this was, yeah. uh -huh. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You are talking about getting healthy by food and doing all this work about it. And we were talking also about mood. What is your right. mood when you work the whole day? Well, you know, in the beginning it was it was pretty pretty difficult. And there were, you know, other things involved. It was difficult for my husband to adjust and all of those things. But uh, let me also let's get to the mood in a second because there's a whole other part. So we got the diet part, right? So you know, kind of what you're taking in. Uh, there are supplements you take, which are you know certain things to support your body. Part of uh, my enzymes to help digestion, and um, there you know a lot of different things. So if you really get interested in the therapy, it's best to go to the institute website and you know, look for the specifics, right? But then the other big part of the therapy is enemas. And you do you don't do colonics. Colonics is like a high, you know, it goes higher in your uh, in your body. So that one personally I don't like it and I have read a lot of literature that it actually removes um, a lot of beneficial bacteria from your colon. But the the coffee enemas are actually they're not there to clear your colon. They're there to bring the coffee uh, close to a blood vessel, which is, is um, you, you just have it in the lower part of your colon, so to speak. And you, you insert the coffee, you hold it for 15 minutes. And in those 15 minutes, uh, your body should have come by, your blood supply. I don't know how you describe it, but you know how our body constantly pumps blood all over the place, so it should have come by four times. And this particular blood vessel is very close to your liver gallbladder, so that coffee is supposed to stimulate to shed toxins out of the liver. Because here is this other theory that if you uh, have disease, that your liver is damaged, and especially if you have developed cancer, that your liver is toxic, so to speak. And the liver can rebuild itself. So, yeah, one second. So, you're helping to detox the liver and then be, for it to become healthy again. Yeah, Heidi. The, you were, uh, did, did I understand right? You 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 have coffee in your yeah. intestine. Yeah. Oh. So, enema so is like. It, but no, we call it upside down coffee, and we call it a coffee break. And that was actually the one thing where I was like, hey, I don't think I want to do that. That just sounded too weird, too like whatever, 
you know, and um, and then I did read more about it, and so actually some of the reading I find is when you start putting so much uh, nutrients into your body, right, your cells, you detox everywhere. But if you don't support your body to get rid of those toxins, you can actually uh, do more harm to yourself than good because now you're you're having all those toxins which were kind of encapsulates in your cells floating around your body. So you need to try to get rid of it, right? And here's the funny thing. So the coffee animal was this thing where I was like, eh, I don't want to do that. I think, yeah, no, you know, like this thing. And most people which are new to girls and uh, there is a really active Facebook group, and I'm going to uh, post the link to that too, to the show notes, uh, where by now there are like 6,000 people on there. When, when I first started, uh, there were maybe 80. But most newcomers go like, eh, you know, I don't know, I'm afraid of that. But what it, what it ends up, it becomes your most favorite time of the day because that's a time where you just get to lay on the bathroom floor do nothing. This is a wonderful time to meditate and to to just relax and to be in the flow and you just relax and hold there. And it becomes very easy to do. And it's it's a very powerful detox and it supports your body a lot. And the reason I brought this up first is why you're going through the therapy, you're going through things it's called healing reactions, right? Where old things come up and so those old things are not always physical you know you can have old physical symptoms coming up like people say they broke their leg when they were 10 years old and suddenly you said area hurts again and then you know it's gone or they have like skin issues they have had for 30 years and they flare up and then they're gone you know stuff like that happens but a lot of emotional stuff comes up and people go through very deep dark phases and it's very common when you start this therapy is that you go through this end of the world scenarios in your head you know just like a lot of old stuff you thought you had dealt with on the emotional level comes up and then it goes. So it's actually, um, you know, a very powerful emotional detox as well, which to me was super interesting because you think this only happens by doing active, you know, work, um, but your your body holds on to emotion, you know, on a very physical level, and when you can release those. You know, it it clears things up. So I said it was very, very interesting. This is interesting. Uh, we could go on and on and on, but we don't have much time anymore. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I think we are sort of to the end. We can do maybe other five minutes. So I would invite first, Margarita. Yeah. What is your impression of what you heard? Yeah, this is a very interesting area and it's lays warm on my heart too because I have my own little garden here and I grow garlic, potatoes, and onions. Yay! <laughs> Kale. Kale is wonderful. <laughs> so that's what I planted. So, uh, and th this is, and I was thinking the other day I did this um, pea soup. And I had lots of onion in there, and I then added some lentils, and, and I let it sit on the stove for two hours, and I thought, yes, I'm doing something right here. <laughs> and the takeaway for this is like, okay, the, I do the oatmeal, and I do these soups, uh, and I'm pretty good at uh, right on track, I think. I don't do Excellent. the, I do the coffee this way, uh, but, you know. <laughs> So that was really cool to learn about what these things are and what you eat during this this therapy. So thank you for coming and um, yeah, inspiring. You're welcome. Yeah, and for me too, as uh, Mayana is my sister, but actually we didn't ever talk about that, and that's why I so I invited her to talk in public about her experience. So the last thing we would like to know: how did it the cancer go? Oh, it, it went very well. I mean, the cancer didn't it went away. Uh, hopefully, all the way. It's it's you know it's hard to tell with prostate cancer because the, 
you have a blood test which is not always reliable, but we went with that and the numbers were going down, you know, so I don't think we want to do another biopsy. Biopsies by themselves are controversial, you know, they're, if there's cancer there, it actually by piercing it, you could actually spread it and so forth, so, you know, but so far so good. You know, so and and there was definitely a lot of changes in in everything. You know, it's when you're on this therapy, your your skin changes, your everything changes. So your outlook, your energy level, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So, but it's it's not for the pain that heart. You know, and if somebody is by themselves without support, I don't think it's the right way to go. I mean, if you have plenty of money to hire those three people, yeah. But, you know, but it's definitely there are aspects and elements to, and everybody should do, you know, just eliminate all the toxic uh, input from your life, which is, you know, your mattress, your, your body care things, anything coming from the store, have air cleaning plants in your house, especially in an environment where windows are closed a lot, a lot of times the indoor air is more toxic than the outdoor air, you know, because the furniture excludes uh, fumes which are actually toxic to breathe. So, but then there are things you can do to kind of mitigate that. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It was definitely a, a long learning journey. I can't say it was easy and, it, you know, on, on all levels, but it's also very powerful in so that Facebook group, I have met people which were stage four cancers, which are doing fine now, you know, and so, and then, you know, for others, it wasn't the right therapy, and then you have to look for something else, and I think that's, whatever you choose, that's always what you need to do to have an open mind. There's not just one way to go, you know, and everybody's different, and everybody's mind is different, so, you know, if, if something feels right for you, then maybe, you know, that's the way to go, but always still be open and said maybe you have to look into other ways too, you know. Thank you. Yeah. This fits perfectly in what we heard yesterday by Lynn Feldman, and I will post the link to that show, uh, Integral Healing, where she says you really need to find for every illness your own way. And it doesn't mean do only classical or traditional medicine and don't do anything of the other stuff or do only all the other stuff and oh nothing of the other. Right. But really check out what is the what is needed in your case to, to be addressed. And she gives a wonderful map to follow uh, and to look where to to go. Actually, it's the integral map, and it's our speciality. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mark sitting here and listening. He's co-hosting this show. So, thank you. Oh, you ah, here. Come on down. See yeah. your face. I heard every word, and I'm going to check this out very closely. You should. <laughs> I, and what do you do with all the caffeine in that coffee? Because it gets absorbed in your intestine, no? Yeah, but not not like when you drink coffee. It's, it's oh, different. gosh. I thought this might convince me that I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> the direct way. <laughs> well, it helps to get rid of stuff you don't want, that's for sure. Okay. <laughs> or maybe that's what you need to keep going so you can get all those juices down throughout the day. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, thank you. I think we have to close down now. There is Pamela uh, sending the link. Pamela in Pamela. English. Mm -hmm. I would say Pamela, excuse me. Uh, there is a link to a recipe. Uh, she has put it down, and there's also Chesau Caxias, and he is writing in Spanish, I guess. So welcome Portuguese. that you are here. Portuguese, okay, mm -hmm. good, I didn't understand mm -hmm. that. So uh, thank you again, and Margarita, next show, next Thursday, what is on? Yes, I have, you invited your sister today, and I have invited my a uh, younger sister who is a ballerina, her husband is a composer and I just had a test hangout with him the other day and he his work has been 
performed in New York and in, in uh, Ottawa, I think in Montreal and Venice. So we're going to talk about sounds and silence. Mm, nice. Wonderful. This is in my one of my preferred topics, sounds. <laughs> so, so thank you everybody for watching and we welcome you next week at the same hour and bye-bye. Bye-bye Marianne, bye-bye.